Hey everyone, and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey, and today we're going to be taking a look at 10 different tips and tricks to help improve your experience for just using retro handhelds. Let's just jump right in, and my description will be filled with links to anything that I talk about in any of the tips and tricks today. First on my list is my personal favorite, but it's transferring files over Wi-Fi. Now, of course, this requires you to have an actual Wi-Fi capable device and another device elsewhere, like a PC or somewhere that has the files that you want to send back and forth. But I use this religiously and almost daily to transfer ROMs, saves, save states, and more to and from my devices. So let me show you a few different handhelds and how they do it. Starting with the Miu Mini Plus with Onion OS, and making sure you're connected to Wi-Fi already, head to Apps from the home screen, Tweaks, Network, and Enable HTTP. And I would also ensure Disable Services in Game is checked, and that's to avoid it taking up battery while you're actually playing games. Then pay attention to the IP address at the top, as now you want to head to your computer or any other device, even a phone works, anything with a web browser that's on your same network. Then you want to enter that IP address in, and you should now see your folder structure. Have fun! And for those with Arc OS or that other OS, it works in a similar way. I'll use my Ambernic RG353PS for this demonstration, but any device with Arc OS and Wi-Fi will work. Head to Options and click Enable Remote Services. Be very quick and pay attention to that IP address that shows up, or if it's too quick for you, we can head to Wi-Fi at the bottom, navigate to Current Network Info, and click A. The IP address is what you want, and again, like the Miu, you can now open up a web browser on any other device on your network and enter that IP address in. This time, however, you're going to have to enter a username and password, and the default is ARC, ARK for both. There you go, you're done. Lastly, we have Android. This needs some setup on your PC as you'll need to share the drive or folders that you want over your network. So it's a bit different than web browser based. To do that, right click a folder or anything you want to share, properties, sharing, advanced sharing, click share this folder, click permissions, click the check mark under full control for allow, apply, and you're done. Pull up the Google Play Store on your Android handheld or device, and you want to download a file explorer called Solid File Explorer. Go through all of the setup and you should then see your Android folders. Click the little plus icon bottom right and new cloud connection. You have a whole host of options to connect to, but LAN slash SMB is what we want. It'll start searching your local network and you should see your PC pop up. Click it and next. Most people have a username and password on their PC, so enter it here. Then click next, 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 and click connect. Now you should see a big green arrow and you're set. Now back in the main screen of Solid File Explorer, top left click the lines and you should see your PC name under storages. If you click that, you'll see the folder you shared. Now you can transfer everything back and forth. Did you know that you could add Wi-Fi to some non-Wi-Fi devices? Typically it depends on the device, the operating system and all of that, but with some devices with Arc OS, it's possible. Let me use my PalKitty RGB20S here as a quick example. And you're going to need a USB-C to A adapter with a USB Wi-Fi adapter. Plug them into the OTG port on your device, then head to Options, Wi-Fi, and you're going to see a connection screen. Push the R1 button to get to the plus sign, then push A, and you should now see all your Wi-Fi networks. Find yours, enter your password, and boom, you're done. You now have Wi-Fi. There's apparently a way to do this using a USB-C to C cable and your Android phone with USB tethering, 
but I've never been able to get that to work on any of my devices. So this is the way today. Here's a quick one. Did you just get your Odin 2 or Retroid Pocket or some other Android device, connected it to your PC and nothing happened? Or maybe you actually did start transferring files over and then it just randomly died? Let's do it. First off, depending on the device, you either need a USB-A to C cable or a USB-C to C cable will work too. It also needs to do data on top of charging. 99% of the reasons this doesn't work is people using a cheap cable or the ones that come with these devices. Just don't. So now connect them and then on your device, swipe down to get to the notification area and you should see a notification that probably says charging this device via USB or something similar. Click it and now you'll see some options of what you can do. Click the one that says file transfer or yours might not have that option, try a few of them until you see your device pop up in your PC. Because if you did it right, your PC likely just got a pop-up that says it now sees your device, and if you head to File Explorer, you can see it and start transferring files. Now, the next issue you'll run into is the file transfer just abruptly stops and you have no idea why. Well, the reason why is when the screen turns off, it's shutting off the connection. So you have two options, either sit there tapping the screen or set a longer screen timeout and you can do that in the Android settings, display, screen timeout. Some devices let you change it to never, but some devices have it as 30 minutes being the longest or even 15. So just make sure you're coming back before that interval to reset the time by just tapping on the device or swiping a little bit. Cloud saves is a tricky one, but did you know that you can set up cloud saves on some of these devices and then just play from one device to the next like nothing's changed? Well, I have a video on it for Android devices and I'll leave a link in the description to it so you can check it out. If you have a Linux device, well, you can too in some cases with some devices, but I'm not the best person to ask for that. I'm not a rocket scientist. Are you still using bins and queues for PS1 games or ISOs for PS2? Some weird other format for Dreamcast and Saturn? Why not just convert them to CHD? CHD will save you a ton of space, especially with PS2 games, and you lose nothing by doing so. It's really easy too. Put the chdman.exe and the bat file in the directory with your ROMs and this only works with PS1, PS2, Dreamcast, and Saturn right now. Open the bat file and watch the magic work. I'll leave a link in the description to these two files, as I modified mine to work with ISO files, so it's different than what you'll find on the web in most places. Are you tired of uncomfortable devices? Need something to protect the device on the go? I did a video on a few of these for the Ambernic RG405M, Retroid Pocket 2S, and the Ambernic RG35XX, but there's more for other devices too. Personally, I find the RG405M and Retroid Pocket 2S ones to be must-have for extra comfort. This one is a bit of a layup, but I know that there's so many of you that are still using the stock SD cards stock ROMs, and more. I know this because I see the questions daily across different subreddits with a sad picture of your Pokemon game not saving and throwing an error, or you just got to the SSN and it crashes when you tried to head to the captain's quarters, and so much more. Yeah, I'm calling you out. The reason all of this happens is you're using the junk ROMs that come with these devices. And unless you really hate saving your progress in Pokemon and other games, you should just replace them. And while you're doing that, replace the SD cards too, with a proper branded one from Samsung or SanDisk. That goes for your operating system card as well. And if you're yelling at the screen that you have no idea where to find ROMs, I have you covered. Just check my description for that video. Retro Achievements is fantastic, 
especially if you ignore the one lone commenter who yells at me for enjoying retro achievements every time I mention it. Do you like achievements for Xbox, PlayStation, Steam, and others? What if you had that for retro games too? Yeah, you can, and it's awesome. Head to retroachievements.org, register for an account, and then in RetroArch or other emulators, sign in and start earning. Now, there's a bit more involved, always, so I'll link a video where I talk about it a bit more, but that's the gist of it. Look, I get it. It's cool to see a device that comes with 100,000 games, and you're just like, oh my god, Becky, that's amazing. Then you get that device, and a quarter of the games are in some language, half don't work, the other quarter are ones that you've never heard of, and you're just like... I guess I'll just play Super Mario World, but that isn't even on the list, and you get mad and you make a Reddit post about why this is the worst device ever. What if you could just curate your list? Maybe instead of 100,000 games, you have the top 25 for each system, and then pick some games from that and start playing. The benefit of that is that you can curate it all yourself. Grab ROMs that actually work with retro achievements if you want it, or the best versions of the game. Build up a list you're familiar with and then keep it on your PC and transfer it to all of your devices when you get them. See what I did there? It's called a callback. I did that. Curate your list, people. Did you know that there's a Discord with over 31,000 people and then channels for every device that you can get support on? You can talk about devices or even chat with content creators like myself, Russ from Retro Game Core, Rob the Retro Tech Dad, Stubbs, Zoo, and Aish from the Retro Handhelds team, Retro Breeze, Team Retro, and more. Yeah, we're all in there and so is everyone else. Why aren't you? It's the quickest and easiest way for you to get support or ask questions about any device. Join us. And on that note, that's going to be it for this one. Hope these tips and tricks helped you with just making your experience a lot better for these little retro handhelds. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow and hope you all have a good one.